Cairo, Senegal to Somalia, Odemaya, shows Africa, na 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 na, Liberia to Libya, resetting the media, Odemaya in Africa, Odemaya. gonna be pretty simple as you said you were just chatting yeah just mm -hmm. gonna have a conversation but how is Rwanda though well this guy has been here for two years I think uh, <laughs> as a non Rwanda in Rwanda? a better <laughs> position uh, to yeah, say uh, yeah. I, th I think Rwanda is good it has been a good experience for me you know much to learn yeah you're, uh, you're the guy who gave up on America <laughs> the, only, Africa. the only African that I know that he gave up on America yeah, but I do it for Africa, and you know I start by it. You love Africa that much? I mean, where else do I have other than Africa? You I mean, believe in Africa? This is all I have. I mean, you don't think um, he was being naive of giving up on on America just to come to Rwanda? Well, I think the the, the first impression is, uh, yeah, this young man is naive. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, but but this you is see, the second impression now. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but you see, I, the f as I told you, I met Iture for the first time today. Yeah. But I had followed his, uh, you know, videos uh, on uh, social media. And uh, the first time I heard him, he was talking about his coming to Rwanda. Okay. And I thought, well, this young man has got, uh, he must be having some kind of a vision. You know, choosing Rwanda instead of going to the States. As you said, very few young people would do that. Exactly. But when he explained why he wanted to come to Rwanda, is because uh, he wants to remain connected with his uh, motherland. Lots of young people these days, you know, they go to study abroad, but. Uh, a lot of them never come back and even those who return you know they return with a, a different uh, mindset and we need uh, you young people to uh, keep thinking about your own uh, continent uh, i like what you do now it's my turn <laughs> uh, the first time uh, I saw your videos, uh, you know, I didn't know you. I had uh, never met you, yeah. uh, but uh, I got interested in the things that you were doing. Wow! You know, covering most African countries at your age, uh, you already had a vision of what you wanted to achieve which is uh, probably the biggest challenge to young people, you know, to know what it is that you want to do. Uh, about two, three days ago, when I sent you a message and said, look, I hear that you are <laughs> stranded in Gisenyi because you can't go across uh, for whatever reasons, uh, I decided just to send you a message and say, look, should you come to Kigali? <laughs> You know, come and stay with me. Exactly. And here we are. That's how it happened. Right. Yeah. Um, I think for the sake of the video and for the sake of the people watching us for the first time, my name is Watermaya, the one and only annoying village boy who is on a journey to change the narratives of Africa. I mean, we're trying to celebrate African excellence and I am joined by... Yeah, um, it's also Usman Ture. 
Um, this is my second time or my third time on this channel, of yeah. course. And as you know, um, I am an African born in the Gambia. So, I love that. Thank an you. An African born in the Gambia. Thank you. Africa you. first. Thank you. And um, our guest for today is Gerald Mshisi. I'm a, a Rwandan, staying in Rwanda. Uh, used to work for the government, but uh, later on uh, moved into private business, which I've been doing now for the last uh, 20 years. So I'm very happy to uh, be with these two young <laughs> guys, one from Ghana, another one from uh, Gambia. 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 Yeah. And uh, my passion uh, after so many years is to just share my experiences with uh, young Africans. As uh, what they will tell you, my passion is uh, Africa, and uh, I consider myself a, a Pan Africanist. Even his, uh, his Twitter handle is Pan African. Indeed. <laughs> right. And uh, I've uh, followed the uh, uh, tourist uh, videos. He is also a very passionate uh, Pan Africanist. Mm -hmm. And uh, what Wode is doing, I'm sure most of you know, uh, he does lots of uh, YouTube videos on the continent. As he says, uh, he's changing the narrative of uh, Africa. Africa to give us uh, positive things that are happening in Africa as opposed to what uh, the Western media uh, tells us about Africa. Usman, you're going to go first? Indeed. Um, I know it is, it is a big thing. And I just want to justify this point. It is because of Wode I am here in Rwanda. <laughs> you travel to the Gambia, discover Juliet Ryan, help her set up a YouTube channel, and she did the first interview that I did, like on, on, on the media. So thanks to you, I am here. So he, he was actually going to find me. He couldn't <laughs> find me, yes. and he met Juliet. And I, uh -huh. and I had to miss my flight just to create a YouTube channel for Juliet. Mm -hmm. I was leaving the Gambia that same yeah. day. I'm like, you know what? I think you can help us change the narratives of Africa. So right. let me just create a YouTube channel for you. Um, I created her first video for her, and then I posted on YouTube. The next morning, I was on my way to Ghana. And then yeah. he went, and then he met Juliet. His first video just blew up. Here we are today. <laughs> Thanks hey, to you. Hi. <laughs> He's giving me credit to you. I don't like credit. <laughs> you still owe me. <laughs> hey, I, don't, I don't think that's what he wanted to say. You know, let, let's forget about that, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we, we have so many young Africans that watch our videos. That's why I really want to sit down and talk to you. I'm not going to be the only person who's going to ask you questions. Usman is also going to ask you a few questions. But me, my first question is, do you think it's worth it for young Africans, based on this guy, yeah? Yes. <laughs> Do you think it's worth it for young Africans to stay in Africa or just go out of Africa and come back? Which one is worth it? Stay in Africa, go and come back, or go and stay forever? <laughs> <laughs> well, it really depends. Hmm. Uh, we'd all love to stay in our, in our countries, but let me say to stay in Africa. Because it shouldn't matter whether I'm Rwandese and uh, I stay in Ghana or in Gambia or anywhere in Africa, it shouldn't really matter. But there are certain things that we cannot get here in Africa. There are certain, uh, certain level of uh, education mm. that uh, is not possible, might not be possible in Africa. So you go out there, to the, mainly to the Western countries, but these days even to China and so yeah. on, well, to acquire certain skills, certain knowledge, certain experiences, which you should bring back home. The problem is when uh, our young people go out and graduate, get uh, high qualifications, and instead of coming back to serve their people, they opt to stay there. Of course, there are many reasons why mm. uh, sometimes they want to stay there. You know, over there you are going to get better salaries. Life is uh, easier. 
But then, really, is that what we should be living for? As young people, you should realize that uh, Africa is the poorest continent. Who is going to bring it up? Who is going to change what is happening in Africa? If it's not you, young people. That's why I was very impressed with his reasons, with the uh, uh, tourist reasons for refusing to go to the, U the US yes. and coming to Rwanda. He was thinking of not just his mother country, but of Africa. So, yes, uh, it is good to go out there, but go there, get, get what took you there, and come back to save your people. Yeah, um, uh, that's, that's very true. But also, um, don't we think the preparation is usually the problem? Like, when I start to go to school here, before I finish high school, is there anything in the school system that is reminding me of patriotism, that is reminding me of love for Africa, that is reminding me of wanting to take responsibility as a young person? Right. Normally, like, um, when we finish high school, it's just if you are you know from a very good background yeah. you mm -hmm. just do the paperwork then you go yes so someone from the gambia let's say going to america has no idea about the rest of africa so they're not really interested that's true so this i think i think that also need to be addressed especially in the school system like putting more patriotism we have seen how um, china how japan have done mm -hmm. that they have more foreign students than our countries. Yeah. Yes. But these foreign students are also patriotic. They go back. Yes. But you know, we, we but, but, but but why why do you think we don't have that patriotic kind of education system? We don't we don't have lessons like that in school for show us how to love our own own continent. There's nothing like that though. Yeah. But why do you think something like that does not exist? Because our education system was created for us. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. Or, or, or is that not the answer? I mean, it is, it is very true. Um, the education system is actually created for us. And many African countries have this problem. At independence, many just focus on the politics. Oh, we are able to elect a leader. That wasn't enough. What happened to your education system? These guys were smiling at the back. Saying, oh, okay, <laughs> leave them. They school in our own system. We fed them with the information they receive about who they are. So everything was planted. Mm -hmm. Now, what is on the ground and what we need to do now is, okay, how do we graduate from this? Yeah. We have a school policy. We have a school agenda. How do we design it in a way that it goes with the country's vision? It goes with the Pan-African vision. It goes with the African Union's vision. It goes with building a continent. Yeah. But today, that's, we, we don't have this. Like, I mean, someone schooling in Rwanda will receive a totally different context from someone even schooling in Uganda. Another person schooling in Uganda will receive a totally different context from someone schooling in Ghana. Okay. So nothing is bringing us together from the school system. That is very true, what you just said. Uh, you see, Africa was not the only continent to be colonized. Mm -hmm. uh, there are other places that were colonized. India was colonized. Uh, even uh, Singapore. Singapore, they were colonized, uh, but these people still maintained their cultures. Mm. In Africa, uh, it, the colonization was more of our mindset, to the point where our parents believe that uh, their children, you know, for them to be successful, they got to go abroad. Yeah. The parents believed in that. And therefore, they started preparing their children also with that mentality that, you know, the best things can only come from... The West. The West. And when you look, and it is unfortunate that even today, you look at our curriculum mm -hmm. in schools, it's, it hasn't changed much from what the colonizers gave us. Our children are trained to give more respect to Western things. There's a time I traveled to South Africa mm -hmm. and I got there in the evening. I went straight to my hotel room and switched on the television. 
But let me tell you, sitting in my room, watching the TV programs, this is in South Africa, this is way after independence, you would think you are somewhere watching a program in the United States. The presenters, they were young people, but their culture, their behavior, their, you know, their style is a copy, you know, paste okay. of the programs in the United States, including the content. Mm. Now, I, I start to think, is, am I in Africa or am I somewhere in <laughs> the States? <laughs> you see that? Yeah. And these are young people. Exactly. You look at, uh, I'm very happy to see, you know, Tura, you look at the way he's dressed. This is African. Wow. No wonder he's uh, eh? a passionate Pan-Africanist. Uh, I love the way you ah, it's a t shirt. Ah, no, no, it's a it's a t shirt but it's not an <laughs> yeah, African t shirt. Look, look at the but message. Yeah, it's uh, Rwanda, Rwanda the heart of Africa. The heart, the heart of, of Africa. Africa. You are proud. Very proud. Yes. Of who you are. Thank you. Right. Mm. And one of the things I love about your videos the role to me one of the most important things you are trying to do is tell Africans that they are one. We keep talking about a, a visa-free Africa. I think the challenges you have been uh, facing in the last three days. <laughs> That's I'm, still, I'm still in Rwanda. <laughs> there's a lot to do with, yeah. uh, uh, visa, with, issues. with the tr visa issues. Now, and you keep hammering you know, upon these uh, visa issues. The freedom of Africans to uh, move from one country to another without any hassle. Exactly. But those hassles are still there. I know the African Union is trying very hard to do something about it, but uh, we have been talking about it for quite a number of years, and they are still there, all right? So, the point I'm trying to make is there is an issue with the mindset of the African. Uh, during my days at the university, there is the late Ali Mazrui. He was a, a professor at the university I went to, and... Uh, in his uh, many, many writings, Missouri said that one of the biggest problems uh, that Africa has is that Africans go abroad and once they get there, they develop the thinking, the world image of the West. Whereas Indians, the Chinese, the Japanese, they will go to those foreign countries, study, but their culture does not change. They still remain themselves. Many Africans. You know, when you go to the, to the States, you come back and your accent hasn't changed. Yeah. We laugh at you. Yeah. What were you doing in the States? <laughs> you know, that, so it is a mindset thing. Yeah. And we need to change the narrative of... Uh, how we Africans, particularly you young people, how you see yourselves as Africans. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't know, but um, I would also like to have this question posed because yes. I know that what a Myers channel is not just for young people. Mm. And you've done something really amazing yeah. by going into retirement mm -hmm. and transforming, you know, your home into something that gives you finance, sustainable financing. And this will be a very good thing to explain to some of the people out there. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, I am here and I've seen all this beautiful yeah. environment. It's just amazing. And I know why my <laughs> friend is here. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah, I, I think it will be good for our grandmas, our grandpas out there. Yes. For our fathers, I don't think it's only uncles. good for our grandmas and our grandpas. <laughs> and good for some of us. You know. for some. Yeah. Actually, for you. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, okay, let me ask. This yeah. whole place used to be your house. Yes, this used to be my house. Wow. I initially built this place as my home. But uh, as I told you earlier, I think uh, uh, it wasn't the wisest thing to do. <laughs> but uh, when you look at uh, the background of uh, many people of my age, mm -hmm. uh, we grew, as Rwandese, we grew up in uh, foreign countries and uh, as refugees. Oh. Now, there are certain 
privileges, certain opportunities that uh, uh, we could not get as refugees. You could not think of uh, you know, buying land, building a house, because to you it was a foreign country. But that wasn't too bad because, you see, that also meant back in your mind you still have the idea that one day I'm going to leave these foreign countries and you go back to my home. Uh, I used to have a friend who used to tell me, Gerald, I see you and socially you live a very good life, you know, but at that time I was a teacher, so he was a colleague and says, I know your salary, it is the same as mine, but I can't live the kind of lifestyle that yeah, you lead. Yeah. So I said, yeah, that is very true. I asked him, so what do you do with your salary? So he told me, you know, he's investing here, there, here, you know, here and there. He's buying land, he's uh, building a house where he comes from and so on. I said, well, me, I don't bother about those things. <laughs> I get my salary and I enjoy myself. <laughs> you, know? you see, when you don't live in your own country, yeah. indeed, yeah. you don't think about yeah. doing those that things. Yeah. So, when I returned to Rwanda, uh, of course, I'd been working for some time. So Which I had, country were you? Uh, well, I came directly from Rwanda. I came from Tanzania. Okay. But uh, I've lived in many African countries. Uh, so, I uh, joined the government uh, for, that was in 1995. Uh, I left the government in 2000 in order to do my own uh, business. You know, those who came back to Rwanda and had some money, I'm trying to give you the background of this home, is, was a... Uh, we tried to put up what we were our dream house. <laughs> <laughs> you know, something that you ne never thought that you could ever. Yeah. <laughs> so there are many people you know, who are in the same situation as me, who, dis who built uh, big houses, but uh, later on, uh, only to realize that uh, it was not uh, wise. wise to do that. Yeah. Which probably is why you want to hear about it, so that you don't make, make the same some mistake. Yeah. Uh, afterwards, when my ch at that time my children were young, so it was okay. Yeah. They were staying with us, and then uh, they left. You know, went to schools, and when they graduated, uh, they didn't want to stay at home with their parents. You know, they wanted to stay on their own. <laughs> uh, that's the, the modern uh, way of living. Mm -hmm. So the house became too big for just uh, my wife, our one child. So we decided to find out what to do with it. And uh, eventually uh, we modified it and uh, changed it to a small but a nice boutique hotel. So, so you don't live here anymore? No, I don't live here anymore. Uh, I have a house. Uh, small, small house. A small one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a three-bedroom house. <laughs> because I won't dare make a, the same uh, mistake. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you, if I had money now, and and uh, I wanted to build something, I would certainly probably put up a, a block of apartments. That makes a lot of a uh, lot of sense. sense. Yeah. This is old-fashioned thinking. Yeah. Uh, it's not a modern thinking for you guys. What you should be doing now is. Uh, build yourself a, a small apartment if you have uh, money uh, put up more apartments for generating income yeah um thank you so much and i'm so happy that you've opened you know to give us all this information i'm sure it will be a guide and as well as to what it um this place is called ezra boutique villa if you ever come to rwanda i recommend it yeah this is where anytime Listen, anytime I come back to Rwanda, this is where I'm going to stay. So maybe we might cross paths. So <laughs> if you are coming to Rwanda, make sure you book Ezra Boutique Villa and uh, you're definitely going to have a good time in here. Um, you know, we're still talking about Africa. Yeah. Just, I have like two, three questions before we go. Mm -hmm. My next question is talking about a borderless Africa. Mm -hmm. Do you think it will be helpful? or it's essential for Africa to have a borderless continent because 
I travel within Africa and I feel like it's one of the most difficult thing to do. Even though I go to a country, I do videos, people are happy, my proud country and all of that. But so many people don't see the challenges that I go through to mm -hmm. enter an African country. I mean, you have been to, you said you've been in so many African countries. Do, do you think that Africa deserves a, a borderless continent? Uh, you know, it's something that amazes me. We always complain that these borders were created for us <laughs> by this uh, 18, uh, 18, 84 uh, yeah, uh, uh, conference Berlin, conference, in Berlin yeah. conference. And we say this is the most unfortunate thing that has ever happened to Africa. Exactly. But since we became independent, how many borders have been removed to create? <laughs> you see, this will bring me back to the way we Africans think. We keep blaming other people for having put these borders in place, but we never want to remove them. Or we find it very difficult to remove these borders. We are even creating <laughs> orders ourselves. <laughs> That's right. Borders are never a good thing. Now, we can't physically remove the borders, but we can remove the borders through allowing people to cross the borders freely, Thank you. as you're saying. That is what should really be happening. Exactly. Uh, when uh, I met the tour, uh, he told me one of his mentors is uh, PLO. PLO mm -hmm. Now, you know, I love PLO. That man is very persistent, he's very focused, he's a Pan-Africanist, and he talks about the things that everybody, every leader yes. in Africa should really implement. But how many leaders listen to, <laughs> to PLO? That's the problem. Eh? The things he says, even those leaders, you know, who don't do anything about it, believe in what he says. Yes. Yeah. Eh? Uh, you know, during the when the, the organization of African Union was created, there is a, I think it was a, Kwame Nkrumah. You are from yeah. Ghana. Yeah. I hope you guys are more Pan Africanists than all other Africans. We, because we we are we are definitely. I mean, if you're talking about Pan Africanism, Ghanaians are. Uh, uh, absolutely, you should indeed. And because that, uh, and that is why I am uh -huh. the guy who is traveling the entire country. That's right. <laughs> because uh, Kwame Nkrumah was. Uh, uh, you know, a, a mentor for many people. Uh, many Africans looked at him as somebody, he's somebody who tried to really bring Africa together. Mm. And there's one thing he said during that conference. He says, you African leaders, if we don't do it now, it is going to be very difficult to achieve it later because you guys are going back in your countries. You are going to enjoy that seat. You are going to enjoy being called the president of this country and this country to leave that seat. And now, no, get other countries to be one country. It's going to be a very difficult thing. And indeed, uh, that's what proved uh, uh, to be the case. Because uh, the reason these borders don't move uh, we don't because they don't get abolished because people love power exactly. you know and africa african leaders love power they will do anything to stay <laughs> in power and personally i look forward to young people like you the work that you are doing through your videos mm -hmm. of trying to bring africans together yours is more on a social you know contacts let's remove the uh, borders let people travel across africa freely uh, we are one i love what uh, Toure keeps talking about uh, uh, for him is really more of a pan-africanist yeah. uh, now we need more of tourists yeah it is indeed a big challenge for us to change things because we've been talking about these things for many many years the Kwame Nkrumahs came, the Nyerere's came, you know, and many other leaders. Uh, uh, this guy, this young guy who was killed recently, um, no, well, not recently, no, but uh, yeah, uh, Thomas, Thomas Sankara, Sankara yeah. uh, whom I also take as a, a great Pan-Africanist. Yeah. You know, 
there are few who are been talking about the need for us as Africans to be proud of Africa of Africa and but you see that for us to be very proud Africans there are certain things that we have to let go you know being influenced by the West mm -hmm. but lots of leaders now find it difficult mm -hmm. for different reasons mm -hmm. but young people like you we need now more young people like you to keep talking about these challenges. There's not much you can do now, but as the narrative keeps growing, keeps changing. We won't give up on Africa mm -hmm. because I believe in Africa, yeah? And I believe that the generation of Africa today yes. will make a difference in future. Right. Because I, I look at the people that follows me and I meet people in town and I think Africa got a bright future. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, meeting someone like Osman Toure, definitely I'm tipping him to be the next president of the Gambia. <laughs> and then, I don't worry, I already Why, booked, why not? Uh, no, I've already booked my ticket. As soon as you, you become the president, I'm, I'm coming. Yo, um, can we just scrap the borders between... You know, right. we, we, so I know that the people that watch me yes. are my age. Me, I don't, I don't want to be president, I don't want to be... But I know that I'm touching a lot of... Yes. young Africans Absolutely. that are going to be future leaders someday. Yes. And yeah. I'm, they know what I've been talking about. Not, not, not just young Africans. Yeah. yeah. I follow you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and yeah. Uh, I believe that in future, I'll be going to them and be telling them that I went through these challenges when I wanted to move from one country to another. Yes. Can we do something about That's it? That's right. About actions, mm -hmm. not about talking. All right. You know, um, if you had the chance to change one thing on the continent, mm -hmm. what would that thing be? Let me tell you, as a Pan-Africanist, the thing that I would like to see change is for our leaders to really uh, do something about African unity. Because most of the challenges we face, most of the problems we face, is because we are disunited. That is one thing that I would like to see happen during my lifetime. <laughs> well, let me, before you go, if Africa ever unite, what do you think will happen? It means progress. It means development. It means sustainability. Because what is, um, Today, Ghana's economy is just Ghana. If Africa is united, your economy means Africa. Why is it difficult about all these movements? Why is it difficult for young entrepreneurs? We have to bridge this. And, and he made mention of it. We cannot jump to the physical, you know, coming together or unity. But let the leaders have commitment, political will. That's everything. Mm -hmm. No more visa. I mean, no more visas for Africans. No, we are connecting with the diasporas. In fact, you are all invited. I mean, all the commitments on business, right to ownership of properties in different African countries. We have to promote this to not just limit young people's visions in, in small, tiny countries. Young people must think Africa, must think big. And to enhance that, you know, it means the unity has to be in place. And once we are able to be united, there's growth, there's development, there's prosperity, and there is that social cohesion that is going to promote, you know, peace and stability across the continent. So I believe that will be some of the biggest impacts for African unity. What are you... You've been asking me because there's just one question, uh, just for curiosity, that I want to ask you. Uh, you know this, you, you, what you're doing, yeah, and you have been doing it for quite a, a while. Yeah. I've been following uh, you. I've checked uh, on, uh, you know, the number of people following you. They are in thousands, thousands, which is a good thing. So you are making an impact. Uh, in Africa, an impact on the youth, because the things that you report about are positive uh, stories, mm. positive 
images about Africa. My question is, have you ever had any kind of uh, support, be, be it, uh, uh, you know, just motivation, be it uh, a thank you, be it uh, a financial support from, uh, let's say, our African systems or governments or... No, you, you see yeah. what I'm trying, eh? Because you are developing Africa. You are trying to change the narrative of Africa. Yeah. It shouldn't be left to you alone. No. And it's like, for them, it's like you don't even exist. Yes. Um, like I said, I've personally even reached out to so many of them because we see the impact that our videos brings to the public, right? right? You try to reach out to them for them to come on board to support what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. It's, yes. all, it's only the private sectors that see what you're doing and they feel like, okay, we know we need to mm -hmm. support this guy. We need to help this guy or the individuals across the continent. Like I go to a country, somebody will be like, okay, stay in my house. And right. somebody's like, oh, I'm going to give you my car. That's how I managed to move from one place to another. Right. But when it comes to the top, mm -hmm. you don't exist. No. You know, for yeah. them, you don't, you don't exist. Right. And I mean, sometimes it, it, it can be very demotivating, but th they, are not, they are not the reason why I'm on this journey. No. My, my, the journey is like, it's more fulfilling because I see the impact on the continent. You know, like I came here two years ago Mm -hmm. um, I did a video sitting in the gutter. I was out of excitement. I told people that Kigali is the cleanest yeah. city in I Africa. Saw, I saw it. I came here for the second time, for the second time, and I'm seeing people that are opening shops. Yes. I'm seeing people that are working in Kigali. I see people that bought houses in Kigali, and they are all telling me that hey, two years ago I found your video and I had to move to Kigali. Mm -hmm. See, these are the kind of impact that drives right. me. But if I had to follow, okay, I'm waiting to see what um, mm -hmm. the government is going to give me, I will never yeah. move. Because I'm even trying to see, like, when you're trying to promote Africa, mm -hmm. I think the next section is, like, try to bring African leaders on board. Right. You know, let the people ask them the question that they've been yearning for. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think I did a poll on Twitter and a lot of people were telling me that, okay, we want His Excellency Paul Kagame to be the first, you know. Mm -hmm. I've tried all angles, man. Yes. But I, you see, but I've seen, I mean, people from different African countries that the, even the whole president mm -hmm. takes them to their palace to show them around so that the youth will see what they have in the country. Right. Mm -hmm. But why is it so hard for African leaders to open up to the, yeah. to the youth. And this is what I don't even yeah. understand. You know, I think, uh, I, well, I wasn't thinking actually in terms of probably support from government, but a little recognition, you know, <laughs> of what you are doing. A little recognition of, uh, you know, Ture, a yeah. young guy mm -hmm. from uh, the Gambia, preferring to come and study in Africa, no, somehow that recognition well, alone, yeah. because it motivates other young people. Thank you. And to me, that is important. You, you already know what you want to do, and exactly. you are going to do it, exactly. no matter. Yeah. By the time you took that decision not to go to the States, you already knew what you want to do in the future. Definitely. You know, a vision is not just for the leaders. Definitely. Huh? You are a leader. Who is the leader? You don't, it's not just the presidents so and the, the ministers who are leaders, you know. Okay. Yeah, you are influencing young people. You are leaders in your own way. Indeed. And I can assure you, you were saying that you are waiting for him to become the president. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, I'm waiting. And you see, you are, you, are, you are growing. Who says that in another 10 years you'll be still doing your videos? It is now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I want to say thank you so much for You're sharing welcome. knowledge with me. And I believe that so many people watched us today have learned something new. Right. Um, please don't forget to um, like the video, share, and um, subscribe if you are new to the channel. My name is still Mr. Ghana, baby. And road uh, to one million, man. Road to one million. I'm also in support of that. Uh, road so to one million, please. yeah. yeah <laughs> road to one million, there. please. Yeah, I'm almost there. <laughs> subscribe and be part of the million family. Thank you.